The Monastery. I picked it up for its title, to be honest. When I'm browsing through the indie games deciding what games to play for this series, I look at the titles and I look at the cover graphics and I'm thinking, oh, this will be interesting for people to look at. So what's this game about? Well, you're about to see that. But first, let's take a bit of a look around. Games, Avatar Carding. Oh, you can tell this developer has high standards for its games just right off the bat. Huh. <laughs> Maybe I'm being overly cruel. Let's see what this game is actually about. Do not look at the demons, or they will take your soul. Well, right off the bat, you can tell those controls. Yeah, this game must be a heck of an example of complexity and depth. Oh my! This looks a lot like a certain game, does it not? Huh. Does this... This game looks overly familiar. Hmm. Let me think on this for a second. Ah, yes, it's a Slender Man ripoff, ladies and gentlemen. Yet another one. Is it any good? Well, let's dive in and see if it is. So right off the bat, the lighting, of course, is good. The art design, silhouettes, Nice ruined buildings. I guess it was good. Let's see here. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, if you could see that monster, and I couldn't, it's because I was playing in a bright room against the recommendations of this game. I was playing in a room where the blinds were behind the TV, and I couldn't see Jack unless I stood up. So, after this, I ended up standing up and trying to re revel in the horror experience. Unfortunately, uh, here's me turning up the sensitivity because the controls are sluggish as hell on, s on medium. Unfortunately, this game already has a few shortcomings. First and foremost, the music. Now, for linear mediums like film, television where horror is apparent music has to be more subtle or it has to hit at the right times video games are non-linear therefore if a composer tries to do the same types of dramatic hits as films and television and they do it without matching it to anything that's happening in game there's a problem it breaks the tone it breaks the atmosphere now I gotta tell you, this music is well produced, but it just, oh god, those are, uh, ugh, those are ugly, ugly textures on the ground, my, my friends. Oh, okay, okay. Thirteen Bibles left to find. All right. Do, 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 do. This music is well produced. Unfortunately, it just does not fit the tone. It undermines it at every possible opportunity. With dramatic crashes coming out of nowhere like this. There was no reason for that to happen, but it did. So I guess here we go. No reason, just music being music. Totally breaking immersion. Wow. I could do better than this. I could do better than this. I swear to God, I could. Another terrible part about this game is the footstep noises, which you've been hearing constantly. I understand this is an indie game, and some developmental shortchanges were to be expected. Some resources were not expected to be there for the developers to use. Unfortunately, that view takes a hit. When I can look on YouTube, I can look on Google, free sample libraries. I can look on any YouTube video of someone walking on grass. I can take a microphone, any microphone, point it at my feet and walk on some grass for a bit. And sound quality and the variation would be better than in this game. The footstep noises, my friends, are abysmal. And unfortunately, since it's the noise you could be hearing most often, it's a deal breaker, my friends. Uh, blur-tastic. Wow. Like I said before, blurry textures, bad textures I can handle in the game if the rest of the game 
has good art design. I like the art design in this game. I like the lighting. It sets a mood, it sets an atmosphere, but it's undermined at every turn by the music and the sound effects. And the most, the biggest point, it's a Slender Man ripoff. It's trying to take an original concept that had great appeal and trying to cash in on it. It's This game is no better than any of the Minecraft clones on the indie game marketplace. Now, it does have a different setting than the Slender Man games, but is that enough? No, it's taking the exact same game mechanics and trying to recreate the magic, and simply, it shows. Play, play Slender Man. Any of the Slender Man games released. Play White Noise. Those are infinitely superior games in every single way. And this game is just not even scary. It's tense. Those first few moments when the fires and the growls were happening were pretty tense. But it's just not scary. It has atmosphere, but it just doesn't capitalize on it. The Slender Man games were successful, I think, in part because the Slender Man was the legitimately terrifying presence in the pop culture mythos. It was mysterious. You didn't know anything about it. Here, you're facing basically the devil. And because of that, well, it's not scary in the slightest. Oh my, look at that. Oh. I wasn't even scared. I was like, oh, really? That's it? That's the best they could come up with? A horror game like this has to have great sound, decent art design, and if it has any music, it has to be good music, and this game simply falls short in every area except the art design, which is okay. This is decent for an indie title. If this is the sort of game you're looking for, if Slender Man was a game you very much enjoyed, and you're looking for similar but different experiences in a different setting, well, by all means, buy this game. But for everyone else, avoid this. Avoid this ripoff. It's nothing more than a cash grab. Something the game developer could throw in his portfolio and say, Duh, I made a game. Look at it. It's good. It ripped off a successful concept. It's obviously good. It's cynical. It's the worst kind of game you can buy right now. This has been Thoughtful Salt, and I'll see you next time.